Hi everybody and welcome to Caught in the Wool podcast episode 37. I am your host Sam B and Caught in the Wool podcast is a podcast put out by Bumblebee Acres Farm which is where I am at right now. Um, We are a fiber arts studio and fiber farm and we raise um, Cormo and Shetland sheep. Uh, Pygora goats and Angora bunnies and we also hand dye yarn and fiber. Um, For those of you who are returning thank you so much for deciding to come back and spending your time with me and to everybody new welcome! I hope you enjoy the podcast. Thanks for checking me out. Um, Thanks for checking me out. (laughs) Okay that was weird. Um, Thanks for checking it out checking the podcast out okay (sighs) for those of you who are coming back you will know that um we get goofy here if you're new here we get goofy so right off the bat we are on target with the goofiness Uh, (laughs) oh so it is wednesday um tomorrow is thanksgiving So this will be, well actually, today is Thanksgiving for you guys because I am putting this out on Thanksgiving and filming the day before. Goofiness, like I said, um, I am on my second cup of coffee because, okay, so let me just, let me just tell you guys. Um, I feel like it's a common thing, but when it is rainy and like, cloudy and drizzly out and like I wake up in the morning I am always like dead tired like I do not want to get out of bed so I don't know if you guys like also experience that but this morning it was rainy and drizzling and the pitter patter was like all on my window and the roof and I was all cuddled up in bed with the peach my dog and um I did not want to get out of bed I had like three alarms set and uh, I didn't wake up to any of them because I just kept hitting snooze. I was like, no, no, it's too cozy. But um, because it's raining, I have to film earlier also because it's winter because then it gets too dark. And even then I had to bring out two lights. So um, I'm not some like high-end podcast or whatever where I have like or like youtuber where I have like a huge light and camera set up and whatever like you guys know I don't um but Senbi who is my sister for those of you guys who are new um is a photographer so she at our old house had a whole photography studio and everything um and she has the umbrella lights and what have you and luckily she had those so I can use them on days when it is cloudy and dark and I can film um but I always find that the lighting is still like a little weird like I don't know like it looks it looks weird in the camera but like whatever we're just gonna go with it so I didn't want to put that coffee down I feel like I need that coffee so I'm picking it back up and there's only this is only half a mug so I said I was on my second cup, but like technically this is like what, two cups? So I've had two cups and this would be my third cup. I'm on my second mug, but it's sweater weather and I am wearing my Drama today. So I've shown this in another podcast before, but I felt like it's rainy, it's cold, it snowed yesterday, it's Thanksgiving coming. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull out the hand knit. So this is my second finished hand knit sweater um and like yeah I'm I'm happy with it um I'm realizing though since I filmed about it last that the sleeves are a little too short I either make my sleeves too long or too short apparently um so luckily I have some more of this purple yarn I think I'm gonna rip out when I have time and uh extend the sleeves by another like two or three inches because like I could have it be like three quarter sleeve but I'm I mean technically it it looks full length until I raise up 
my but maybe that's normal i don't know maybe i'm overthinking it but like you know when you knit something and you spend so much time on it and then you overthink it afterwards and you're like yeah but i could have done it better or like maybe i should just fix a little thing i don't always do that but i feel like on this sweater, I kind of feel like it because I put so much work into it. It was my first color work sweater and like, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I mean, I'm sorry if you guys have heard me talk about it before, but I um used local wool, not our sheep wool, but this is 100% Coopworth wool from Hidden Valley Farm in, um, I'm not going to try to say it. Manitowoc, Wisconsin, I believe is where she's located. Um, well, her her and her husband and her farm. Um, and they raise Coopworth sheep, which are beautiful, curly, cute little sheep. Um, and she has beautiful yarn, beautiful fiber. Um, they have kind of like a little mill too. And this is all single ply. So I was like, oh, it's a good like replacement for low B because I can't wear um anything with like really like rough guard hairs in it um it just like irritates my skin too badly and low B sometimes has like still some of that guard hair from the Icelandic sheep so I figured this was like a good a good um what was the word replacement substitution more coffee definitely need the more coffee but um also i realized i never talk about my coffee but normally what we drink is the 1850 i think it's 1850 i'm like now i'm thinking what what are those numbers? 1850 coffee blend? I think it's by Folgers actually, but it's like a regular coffee that you brew. Um, not an instant coffee. And it's really good. Like it's really nice and like smooth and mild. And lately, um, I have been putting the Caramel Macchiato Creamer that's Starbucks brand. We just get it at Walmart. It comes in like a big thing that has the most annoying top. I do not like, I do not like the top. The pouring situation always gets cream everywhere, but like, otherwise it's delicious. It's so good. It's sweetened, so you don't have to like figure out how much sugar to put in. And um, it's like real cream and everything because I don't like drinking the fake stuff. I know the fake stuff can taste good, but it, I, I don't feel good about drinking the fake, <laughs> the fake stuff. Also, I'm from the Midwest. I'm from like dairy country. So I feel like you gotta support the dairy industry, but you know, that's just my farming background. So yeah, this has just been like a rambling little beginning, mostly because I've been so tired this morning that I feel like we need, well, we, I need like to get in the podcast mindset i was so ready last night i should have just filmed last night if i had better lights if i was like a real youtube like youtuber who had the lights i would have done it but it's too dark in our house at night so oh, here we are and i'm tired and it's rainy out you know i really like the rain though besides it occasionally giving me headaches and also um because I have the most delicate sinuses um, and making me sleepy. I love the rain. Rainy weather is just like so cozy and perfect for knitting. Like, isn't it nice? I mean, isn't it nice for knitting? But um, I wish I was knitting right now. Though my issue is that I cannot multitask very well. So if I'm knitting something and talking, one or the other is gonna get messed up. So I like, am, I admire the knitting podcasters and crochet podcast um, podcasters. I'm gonna be tripping over my words this whole video, you guys. Like, just we're just gonna go. <laughs> we're just 
just going with it. We're just gonna power through. I apologize in advance, but it's just, it's okay. We're gonna stop talking about it because it's gonna keep happening. Oh, I admire them because they can do both. Anybody who can knit while they are podcasting, I am just, is so in awe of their skills. So unfortunately, like I wish I could do both, but I can't. I'm not even gonna bother. Okay, so what are we talking about in this video? So this video, we're going to be talking about what's been happening on the farm, what's going on. Uh, we're gonna talk about whips and FOs. And actually, I don't think we, no, we do have FOs. We're gonna talk about new pattern releases and I have a special discount code for you guys. And also, two other things that are very exciting. We have our Thanksgiving, Black Friday, Shop Small Saturday, and Cyber Monday combination sale. So it goes from Thursday, Thanksgiving, all the way until end of the day on Cyber Monday. Um, our online shop, we have 20% off everything. This year we are doing 20% off every single thing except gift cards. But um, yeah, so that even includes our dye to order tonal yarns, which is very exciting because in the past we have never offered anything dye to order during the sale. Um, but this year, you know, it's a special year and we decided to just do it. Um, it's been a COVID year, so we're just gonna do a little extra love. You guys have been you guys and everybody who um has supported us this year it has meant so much to us when the pandemic started we were so stressed and scared all of our shows had been canceled um you know in the beginning we didn't know if summer shows and fall shows would be canceled all of those ended up being canceled and luckily thanks to everybody supporting us so wonderfully and really going above and beyond with that. We have thankfully not had a difficult year. So thank you so much to all of you guys. So that is why we do this sale. Um, you know, I'm gonna say real quick, we don't normally do sales. And that is partially because, um, well, there, there are a few reasons and factors that go into this, but I feel like one of the main reasons why we don't do sales is because we don't want to discount our art and hard work or in turn make other artists and farmers feel like they need to discount their work. If you if you are a small business and you do sales, that's fine, that's good for you, but we feel like it kind of undercuts our competition. Um, and well, they're not just our competition, but like our, our peers, like if you offer a lot of sales or you discount your product too much, it makes other people who maybe have to put forward more um, capital into their work or put more time into their work and makes people see us more as competitive businesses instead of the small business artists and farmers that have specialty products that we are. So we like to keep our product like at value for that reason. So we only do one sale a year, um, except for patterns. We'll do sales on patterns because I feel like patterns are different um, because they're like a digital item. But as far as like yarn and fiber we only do the one sale a year and that's a seriously it's a thank you sale because we appreciate you guys so much and we just want to we just want to thank you by offering things at a significantly discounted price <laughs> one time a year so that's coming up um I guess I'll just finish talking about the sale now I'll I'll bring it up later because I know people skip around in videos, so I'll bring it up and mention it again later. But the sale is going to be a code you use at checkout. Um, it takes 20% off everything in the online shop, except gift cards. <laughs> and uh, yep, that'll be going from 
Thursday, sometime Thursday afternoon, I'm putting out a newsletter um, Thursday morning. So, and also I'll be putting the code on the shop and on Instagram and on Facebook. So I haven't picked out the code yet. I'm sorry, I'm behind on figuring this stuff out. So I will put all of that um, in the description as well um, below. If you're watching this after the Cyber Monday 2020, that code's not gonna work. I probably won't remember to go in and delete it. I realized that when I was editing videos the other day that like if I put a code in the description, I don't go back and delete it later. <sighs> you know, it's just a thing. So yes, the code will be in the email. It'll be on Facebook, Instagram, in the description below and that'll take 20% off everything in the online shop. So, yes, and now that I talked about the sale so much, I'm like, what else am I gonna talk about? Um, oh, okay, so what we were talking about is the exciting things. I said we had two more exciting things. One is the Thanksgiving sale. Um, Thanksgiving, Black Friday, Shop Small Saturday, Cyber Monday sale, all that, yeah, okay. Um, and then also we have another Christmas yarn update. That is going to be next Wednesday. So I'm not gonna put out a podcast before then. I'm gonna talk about that here and it is gonna be after the sale. That's just how it, how it landed. Also, it's specialty product that is limited time so we didn't want to put it in the sale anyway, so that, that's like, you know, whatever, whatever. Um, but I am going to be showing you guys a bunch of the exciting yarns that are going to be in that. I have them over here and I can't wait to show you. So what's been happening on the farm um, and business? Well, I told you guys last time that we had finished, pretty much finished winterizing everything. Um, it luckily hasn't been super super cold since then uh we we've been actually getting some like decent weather we got some snow the other night not last night the night yeah literally the night before last night and then it lingered a little bit but yesterday it was quite warm it was like in the 40s um and it all melted which is nice but now it's raining so I mean, like, in some ways, the rain is better than the snow. The snow is beautiful, okay? Don't get me wrong. When you have a farm, like, I'm just saying from a farmer's perspective, like, I love both snow and rain. If I were not a farmer, I would not really want rain right now. I would want snow because it's, like, that time of year. But as a farmer, it's nice to not have to deal with frozen water because that is probably the most annoying part of having a farm in the winter. Um, for the bunnies, all of their water bottles freeze. Every, every bunny has their own individual water bottle and their water freezes. And then we have to do like a switcheroo. So we will bring those water bottles that are frozen in. And then we can only fill their water bottles like halfway because they don't get to you know, if they're filled all the way and then it freezes, it's going to possibly break the water bottle. So then we switch them out, bring out a fresh water bottle set for all 30 rabbits that we have and do the same thing the next day. And sometimes you have to like, we'll keep them in like a big rubber tub type thing that has handles. We use a sa the same sort of thing for carrying our yarn around in the studio. I've brought one and shown one like before. It's just like they're big colorful rubber re plastic tubs things. But anyways, so <laughs> we'll leave them in there. But the problem is, is that if you have too much water in there, so we only fill them halfway. If you have too much water, it freezes anyway before they can drink it all. Um, and then you leave it in the tub and the water bottles don't melt by the time it's the next day. Even if you have them in like 
your house because we used to bring them into the house to de thaw. Oh my goodness. It's just a whole thing. It's just a whole thing. Um, so that's frustrating then, like for the sheep and everything. Um, sometimes you have to fill like big like five gallon buckets and cart them out. That's what Joey, um, Roby, the youngest bee, but he is almost 18. He's going to be 18 in January. He is my younger brother, youngest sibling. Um, and he, he does most of the farm work because he's a strapping young man now. And he is taller than all of us and has the upper body strength <laughs> to do that sort of thing. But, um, yeah, so it's nice not having to do that right now. It's nice having things not be frozen. Um, also then you have to worry, are all the animals warm enough depending on how cold it gets? Like it's just a whole thing. So, um, other than that, like since we winterized everything as in we got everybody their warm bedding in, um, we sheared who needed to be sheared while it was still warm. So now they have a little bit more coat on them. Um, now that it is getting colder and, uh, yeah, other than that, we finished Advent in the nick of time. We were literally working up until the last minute on Advent. Oh, so next year we have decided that we will not be doing Advent next year. I really want to still do some Advent next year. Just at least the Harry Potter and the Tolkien, but the other bees really say they need a year off. So we're taking a year off and then we're going to reassess in 2022. So 2021, we probably won't have Advents. We will probably have like 12 days of Christmas, maybe eight nights of Hanukkah, other fun things, but we won't be doing the full Advent because what we do, if you haven't gotten an Advent from us or you're new, what we do when we do advents is we um, dye full skeins of almost all of them are 25 new colors. So we come up with 25 new colors for every advent. Um, sometimes we'll bring other ones like so this year Harry Potter was the Prisoner of Azkaban and we've had some Prisoner of Azkaban colorways in our main lineup. So we put those in there because they fit the story, they're main things. So like, yeah. Um, but usually almost every single color, like I'm pretty sure Tolkien, um, like the Lord of the Rings Two Towers one that we just did, pretty sure every single color was a new color for that one. So Queen Bee, my mom, and Sen Bee, my sister who is one under me. I'm the oldest. She's the second oldest. Um, they are dyers and they come up with all these colors. This year we had four different advents um, and they were almost all brand new colors. So they come up with these new colors, they dye them in full skeins, and then I wind them into minis from the full skein. So they are an accurate representation of the color because you can order pre-made mini skeins and that's what a lot of people do and there's nothing wrong with doing that. That's what we did for our um, trick-or-treat minis um, this year and it was really fun and exciting to see the color like actually dyed up on a little tiny skein but we also want them to be sam good samples of colors because in the past what we normally do is since we came up with 25 to 100 new colorways <laughs> we want to bring them to shows so and put them in our lineup for the following year so that way people who had chosen to do an advent kind of have a little mini sample of colorways that we might end up releasing as full skeins later. So it's a lot of work. We also individually label every single mini. So they have a little tiny, um, they call them ball bands, but they're, you know, if you put them on a skein, I guess they're a skein band and 
they have all their information on them. So they're like little tiny mini, mini skeins. Actually, here, I'll show you. It looks kind of like this, even though these are 20 gram minis. So our, uh, our advents are 10 gram minis. So they're a little bit smaller. So they're even tinier than this. And um, yeah, they have all, all of that. So we have to label every single little tiny mini and then we wrap them. We don't put them in like little bags that you open. Wish we did would be way easier, but what we do instead, because we are overachievers, <laughs> is we wrap them like little um, Christmas crackers. So if you are British or from the UK or anything like that, you'll know what that is. But um, if you're from the US, it's like, wrapping them like a hard candy almost. So we roll them in tissue paper, we tie the ends, and then you can either like pop them open or unwrap them like a present. <sighs> it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. And usually because I am winding all of the minis, um, I don't have time to help label or wrap anything. So that all falls on the other bees. Since Queen Bee and Sun Bee already did all of the dyeing, it's just a lot of work. Um, so they need a break. I need a break. I'm glad that it's all over with for this year and hopefully the postal service gets everybody their advents in time because they've been a little iffy, but we gave them like 10 days. So hopefully in 10 days they can get everything shipped. We wanted to get them done sooner, but this year, because of COVID, it's just been crazy. Like, that's a whole thing. I know I've talked about it before, but um, Maryland Sheep and Wool was like our second show to get canceled, I think. The first one that got canceled was Yarn Con in Chicago, which is a very big show for us. Maryland Sheep and Wool is an extremely big show for everybody who goes. Um, You know, it's that one and Rhinebeck are the top two in the country. Um, so that was the second one to get canceled. And luckily, so many people were so wonderful that they shopped online through the Maryland Sheep and Wool website. They looked for vendors and then shopped online. So um, unfortunately, okay, so it would have been great had we had a ton of ready to ship in the shop because we knew the pandemic was happening and we weren't sure if like people were even going to shop online we didn't dye a ton of stuff we put stuff as dyed to order in the shop and our turnaround was like two weeks and we were doing fine with it it was like fine it was no big deal um but Maryland sheep and wool people were amazing and really went above and beyond <laughs> with the online shopping we had like a month to six weeks turnaround because we had to dye so much stuff. It was a crazy time. So we were planning on doing advents during the summer, but everything got pushed back because of dying for Maryland Sheep and Wool Online. So it's been like a game of catch up ever since. And I am so relieved that we have the holidays now. Like it's just really nice we are not going to be doing a ton of work during the holidays um so that'll be good we're going to be doing vlogmas again this year i'm very excited about vlogmas um we did it for the very first time last year so you can watch some of our vlogs from last year if you want they're still on the channel um but yes this year we're going to be doing a bit of vlogmas. I'm probably gonna do, okay, so some people liked that I combined days and put them like all in one video and I did like clumps. I think I did like four vlogmases in total and I just did like five days at a time or something. Um, mostly because I didn't wanna like put up boring videos. So some people like that. Some people like the daily vlog like just even if it's just the same kind of thing it's very like therapeutic and nice and calming and I watch 
plenty of people who do that on vlogmas it's kind of like just a nice little time to sit and knit and you watch your daily vlogmases um i don't think i'm gonna do it just because it's so much work and i really want to enjoy it. <laughs> calming down a little bit. I also have so much gift knitting to do last minute. Of course I left it all for last minute but you know advents really threw things off. Um, also this podcast is turning out to be very very long but you know what we're just gonna go with it. If you want to skip around the video feel free. Um, I have so many projects to show you guys in a little bit but I want to keep chatting with you guys. Um, <laughs> Sorry. If you don't want to chat, skip me until you see projects. I mean, like, it's fine. I'm, I'm not hurt. But, um, oh goodness, what was I saying? Yeah, I have so much gift knitting to do. I'll show you some of it in a little bit. Um, but, but yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be doing Vlogmas and I'm, we will probably post daily stuff because we have been posting daily stuff on our Instagram. So if you want to see like a little shot into our lives like on a daily basis, um, we kept back advents, one of every advent for ourselves this year. So I believe our plan is to unwrap one of each advent every single day and show it on the Instagram. I kind of want to do it for YouTube too, but I don't think that I'm going to get the time to, because then I have to like edit a video and upload a video and all of that stuff and run a business and it's just, will help run a business. I'm not the only one running the business. I'm just like one of the spokespeople for the business. Help run a business, help run a farm. Like I don't, I don't know. Like I, I feel like I can't commit to it. I don't want to like say I'm going to do it and not do it. So we'll probably do combo days again. <sighs> but um, yeah. And also because of COVID, I mean, we're not going out anywhere. We've been pretty much quarantined. Like I know other people have not really been quarantined. We've been quarantined since March. Like we, we have gone out a couple of times. Like we've had some doctor visits. Um, we've, you know, had to go into the feed store a couple of times, but like literally we don't go in any store. Everything we order online, we, and pick up, um, if like we can like groceries, like we just order and have them bring it out to our car, all of that stuff. So like, we're not going to have very much to show on Vlogmas. Like if you like, we're going to be home the whole time. So it's not going to be like that exciting. So might as well com combine the days. So if anything exciting does happen, like <laughs> it's there in one video, right? Well, whatever. Um, so yeah, I think that's all. I think that's pretty much all to tell you guys about like what's going on on the farm. But yeah, so I'm running out of coffee. So let's get like hop in to show the whips and FOs. So I'm going to show the FO last. I'm going to go through, what is this? Left to right if I'm looking. I don't know. Whatever. I'm going to start here and I'm going to end over here with projects to show you guys. So first up, and I'm not, I'm going to talk about bags, I guess, in this video. I don't always talk about bags in videos, but I have some cute bags. So this bag is from Lovecrafts and she is a new like bag person we supported. This is a super cute bag. Um, we got it because a long time ago, almost 10 years ago now, actually this year, it was 10 years ago, we went on our first and so far last family vacation. We went on a little road trip and back then we um, did not really have much of a fiber business, but we did have the Angora bunnies and we, um, sold Angora bunnies for delivery. So what we did was we sold them online like we used to do and we dropped them off on our way to Florida to Disney World. <laughs> so yep, that was
was an exciting time. So we started off our journey with like 30 bunnies and ended it with no bunnies, but we stopped in Savannah, Georgia, and we went to Tybee Island. And so this bag reminded us of our little family vacation. And um, so Queen Bee got it. And what I have in here, and this is a very nice bag, and I will link the bag makers below. It has pockets. I love when people include pockets in their bags. Um, and I also have a project in here. <laughs> oh, so I have a pair of cozy, hike, blah, mm, cozy hiker socks. <laughs> oh, tripping over my words. Um, this is knit in our coquette sock in our, um, what's this color? Where are you Christmas color, which is new this year. So coquette sock held two strands together and you can see how it kind of marled it. Very cute. Queen Bee is working on this one. And for the heels and toes, she's using various minis from our Pure Happiness mini skein set. So I have those in the shop right now, actually, um, on several different bases. So if you wanted to use them, and we have Autumnal Happiness too, which is more of an earthy tone collection. And then we have the Happy, Pure Happiness collection. So if you wanted to do DK socks, um, squishy sock socks or coquette sock socks, which are our different main sock bases, um, and use those for different heels and toes, you totally can. That's what Queen Bee is doing. Um, but yes, up here she is using Razzle Dazzle Tickled Pink Marled together. And this one is Key Lime Vibe. But Cozy Hiker Socks is a pattern that Sen B came out with a, um, what was it? Was it last month? Yeah, in October. So those I will link below, but we still have some of this color in the shop. We will not be dying more of this color. So I believe we have some DK. We have some bubble sock left. So bubble sock makes beautiful shells. You can make socks out of it as well. It is a um, superwash merino and silk blend. So it's a very lovely and we have DK as well. Um, and cozy hiker socks are a thicker sock pattern. So we have instructions on how to make them in DK as well. But yeah, these are super cute. Um, look, just look at this. So if you were to make these out of just regular, like one strand of sock, you weren't going to marl it or DK, it would do this kind of pooling to make it look almost like it's striping. How cute is that? And she has her little sparkly snowflake progress keeper. Come on, focus. We have, um, I don't know if this is focusing. Oh, there we go. We have a bunch of holiday themed um, little notion sets in the shop right now as well. And those will also be, actually, no. I don't think, no, actually we're not doing the 20% off. I lied. We are not doing the 20% off on the notions because those are baby bee. Um, so for those of you who are new, Queen Bee is our mother and she runs the business and she has four little bees that work here, four little worker bees. Um, I'm the oldest, then it's Sen Bee, then Baby Bee, and then Broby. Um, so we're all basically adults except Broby, who is almost, almost 18, almost an adult. Soon I'll be able to say we are all adults. But she makes these as kind of like a little way for her to make extra money because Sen and um, I make our patterns. So that way she can have some spending money. But look at how cute this little sparkly snowflake is. And some of those are still in the shop. But yeah. Um, also, I noticed in the last few pod podcasts I haven't been talking about my knitting needles that I use. Pretty much all of the knitting needles all of us bees use are a Dyak Craft. 
So they are always credited at the bottom of our video. They actually sponsor us. So that is exciting. Um, but Queen Bee here is using um, some US 4s in their lace tips. And these are their um, Darn Pretty Needles, which is their wood needle line. And they are hand turned in Vermont, which is very, very exciting. And I know I showed those very poorly, but um, yeah, so all of our needles, unless like I might say otherwise, are Diac Craft. So first one done. And like that's a problem with having things behind me is that I uh, have to put them back. So now I'm going to start with this one which I know is another pair of socks. And I have something exciting to talk about with these. So <sighs> we went to, okay, and this bag is from Withering Sheep. She makes these cute little roly-poly bird bags that are embroidered. Um, and I will link her below too, but she always has like a nice little divider with a zippered pouch in here. Um, Senbi is making a pair of String of Light socks. So the String of Light sock pattern is by our friend Sock Witchery, who I will link this pattern below. Um, and she has a little progress keeper that has a little look at it. Come on, focus. It has a little face. It's a little mug with a face and a little cinnamon roll. It's super cute. This is from Simply Serving. I will link her below as well. And I should also say, finally, I haven't mentioned these lately, but see this little sheep? It's like a little end binder. This is from Crafty Flutterby. Um, and they are she has like these little bunny rabbit ones and she just came out with cat and dog ones and she designed them she designed this whole like little this whole little shape and everything and they're very 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 helpful but we have some non bumblebee acres yarn here this is a zauber ball um just close it just close just close it <laughs> Queen Bee had to go and do something and <laughs> she's closing the, we have pocket doors in our house. Well, at least for the living room, we have like one of those sliding pocket doors because we have a, an old farmhouse. Um, and so like that weird groaning, if you heard it in the background was her opening and closing the door. She gets to knit. Well, I'm filming and working. She gets to knit, of course. Anyways, back on topic. So this is a Zauber ball. I don't have the color with me. Um, actually she might have it in the pouch. Let me look. Nope. Nope. She doesn't because that's send me for, <laughs> for you. Um, and she is, like I said, doing our friend Lindsay sock witchery's sock pattern. She came out with this pattern last Christmas time. And she is coming out with a sister pattern actually this Friday, which is a very exciting. And also for Black Friday, she is doing a buy one, get one free on all of her patterns. So I am linking her below. Definitely check her out. She has a lot of, a lot of very fun, easy and lovely sock patterns. So if you want a pattern, like a sock pattern that is has a little bit of interest but is not too involved and is very like lovely and cozy to wear i highly recommend her pattern she also writes them so clearly like they're foolproof um she is one of the only person's patterns that i knit consistently because i don't knit a lot of patterns that aren't mine just because i don't have a lot of time um to knit other people's patterns because i'm a designer and what have you but um I really love her patterns and so string of lights is just so cozy um I showed that Sen B had done this pattern in our coquette sock yarn and she had done that in mm, what was it graveyard smash uh, one of our Halloween colors so if you want to go back in like a Halloween 
episode. Um, actually, I think I showed the finished socks in the last episode. So what was that? Episode 36? Um, but yeah, so she loved the pattern so much that she is making another one. And the sister pattern, which is stack of books. Hold on, wait. I had so many things to talk about that I have to, I have to double check on a few things. Um, ooh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes, that's stack of books. All right, and, um, Lindsay is super wonderful. She actually, um, designed these out of one of our colorways. She designs most of her socks using our colorways because she is just a sweetheart. Um, so definitely give, check her out. I'm going to show you guys these on my phone. Um, that's what I'm doing right now, but I don't know if the camera is going to pick them up. Yeah, that did. So as you can see, they have a little bit of texture on there. Look at the cute heel flap. Um, obviously you can on pretty much any sock pattern, you can substitute your favorite heel in there. It's not very difficult. So like if it tells you to start knitting the heel flap, just start doing your typical like fish lips kiss heel. I always do a heel flap. Actually, all of us bees always do the heel flap. Um, pick up along the edge, gusset decrease kind of deal because they just fit our feet better. Some people, I guess, don't have very much of a problem, but I feel like because we have maybe a larger instep, I don't know. It just, they don't slide as much in my experience, but yes. So Sunbee got this Sauber ball as a bit of a surprise. Queen Bee and I um, supported a local yarn shop and we got everybody Sauber balls and Sunbee casted hers on. And look at how cool this is knitting up. So I really love Zauber Balls because they have that very much of a hand-spun yarn feel to them with their long repeats of colors and they're kind of marled in there. This one is very beach-like, which is weird that I just showed you a Christmas project in a beach bag and then like a beachy themed colored project in a Christmas bag, you know. It's just a thing, I guess. It's just, <laughs> it's just a thing. So, um, I'm going to show you guys more projects and then actually I'm going to go with mine last. I'm going to show you guys mine last because I also, I have a new bag and so it's kind of like an acquisition. And so I'm going to show you guys another acquisition that we got afterwards. So I'm going to skip this super cute bag and I'm going to move on to this one. So the next two bags, this one and the other, are from Twisted Yarn and Fiber, Wanda, who I've talked about before. Um, we love Wanda. Wanda is amazing. Um, we met her at the Southeastern Animal Fiber Festival, or aka SAF, a couple years ago, and she is just a sweetheart. Um, and she like sews all of her bags. She makes very nice drawstring bags that are very cute. Um, she just did a Christmas update. I don't know if she has anything left because we bought a lot of it. We did have a lot of Christmas bags, okay? In my defense, Queen Bee's defense, we did not have a lot of Christmas slash holiday bags. So we have started that like during fall and Christmas, we want everybody's project bags to be either fall or Christmassy, depending on the season. So that way when they're sitting out, it matches the decorations. Okay, so like, I know that's extra, but this is our business and our hobby. So like, basically one of our only hobbies and, <laughs> and the business. So, and also it's supporting other makers. So. Um, this is a baby bee project and I showed this before. I don't know if I showed this in the last podcast, but she is making a two color gathering shawl. So 
The Gathering Shawl was my very first pattern ever, and it has since developed into a two color version as well. Um, so the two color version is extra large. What Baby Bee is doing here, and the lighting isn't really picking up the nuances in this colorway very well. But what she is doing, is she isn't using two colors, but she's following the two color recipe to make an extra big shawl. Um, and she's also holding a strand of spun sugar. So spun sugar is our um, brushed alpaca silk. So it is a substitution for mohair, which I am allergic to, so we cannot carry mohair in the um, online shop because I can't help process it and what have you because it makes me itch so badly. But um, it makes the shawl so fuzzy and nice. So Queen Bee actually came up with this idea um, and I had shown the shawl before. If you want to look in a previous video, I don't remember which one it is, but I'm wearing a fluffy pink shawl. It's that shawl. Um, so what she is doing and what Queen Bee did in hers is hold a strand of our Coquette sock yarn with that spun sugar and it gives you the structure of the Coquette sock but the soft fuzziness of the spun sugar. And then her colorway she's working with is Feathered Nest um, and it is taupey, taupey. <laughs> taupe <laughs> taupe gray uh white and a little bit of a teal blue so almost like a robin's egg blue um and she is just using that color for the whole shawl except i think she told me last night she's doing a solid color for like just a regular tonal for the end lace section um which I think will be very pretty and make it stand out a little bit more. And yeah, the brushed alpaca that she is holding, the spun sugar, is just our Edelweiss color, which is our undyed um, ecru, ecru white tonal. But yeah, so it kind of lightens up the whole project, makes it very soft and just really lovely. So she is making this for Queen Bee as a gift. I think originally she was making it as a birthday gift for Queen Bee. Her birthday is in March. Um, and she had started it very, very early. But I think she might be making it for her for Christmas now because she's been working on it pretty regularly. So we will see. And then I have another project. I'm not sure what's in this one at the top of my head. Oh! <laughs> so we're getting into Christmas yarn real quick. I showed this one last week. This is another twisted yarn and fiber. This one I think is from last year though. Um, well, it definitely is from last year because we have not gotten our Christmas bags yet. Um, this one I showed last podcast. This is her Holly Jolly Christmas Magic Cake Cowl that baby, her baby bee. She's doing a lot of, a lot of projects. She's making this for herself out of our Shimmer Sock. So Shimmer Sock has a slight sparkle to it. And Holly Jolly Christmas is inspired after, um, Ooh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. I'm like planking on the words. Um, so you can see it has those like warm, happy, classic red and green and that like almost primary blue and a little bit of like soft red or soft red, soft brown in it. And it's just like a very cheerful, cute color. But um, when she's knitting it in the round alone, it was pooling super cool. And now it's kind of doing a little bit more of a finer stripe as she's doing her increases down here. But this is the Magic Cake Cowl. This is one of my designs. I will link it below. I link all of the project's um, details below, like their pattern. And I think I say also in the description what the yarn is. 
I don't think I'm gonna run out of characters this time. Sometimes they limit the amount of things you can write in your video description. So I've asked the bees very nicely to add all of their projects to Ravelry so I can just link their Ravelry page. But even I have not been keeping up with that. So I can't be very judgmental. <laughs> but um, this is super cute. She's going to have it done soon, so she'll be able to wear it around all through the holidays. So you'll probably get to see lots of it during Vlogmas. But isn't it so cute? So holiday. I love it. <laughs> um, okay, so next up. <sighs> I'm going to have a sip of coffee before I talk about my project. Because after I talk about my project, I have to talk about some FOs. And the FOs are all, sorry, the FOs are all a new pattern that is being released on Friday. So I need to wet my whistle. I feel like that's a saying from like a very long time ago, but I don't. I also feel like it's not. So like, we're gonna bring it back. What my whistle. <laughs> okay, all right. Like I said, the goofiness, the goofiness is here. Oh, so my coffee is cold, which is fine. Now it just tastes like an iced macchiato after all the ice has melted. But not watery so even better um and also the sweater is super warm so like i don't feel like i need warm coffee the warm coffee does taste better um whew. oh no i do have another i do have another whip to show you before i talk about mine so another thing and like i have of course i have more to say about this so this is the calico quilt shawl which is my one of my second annual advent mystery knit along designs this one senby is knitting out of our 2018 lord of the rings advent calendar and she is almost done with it so what it is is it's a bunch of triangles and they are added together in a way that makes the fabric all go in the same direction so all of your knitting stitches are going in the same direction so after you are finished it behaves like one knit piece so instead of having picking up and having your knit stitches go vertically and then horizontally and then diagonally or anything like that. They're all going in the same direction. So afterwards, when you block it, it's very, very pleasant. But this guy here is almost done. She has to add on, mm, it's, you know, she has the top done, so she's working on that bottom triangle place. So down here, she has to add, <laughs> she has to add I think, um, four more triangles, it looks like. So she is trying to get it done for Christmas because she had gotten it basically this far in 2018, and she just hasn't worked on it since. Like, she just, I don't know, lost a momentum or what have you. So... She has to, she has to do a little bit more on it, but, um, yeah, so that's another thing Sen B is working on. Queen B is also working on some other projects, um, another pair of socks, but I can't show you guys that until after the holidays because it is a surprise advent colorway, um, so, like, I can't spoil it until after the holidays, um, but yeah, so Queen Bee is working on some other things. I just finished. Okay, so first things first, I want to talk about this bag. So this is a Busy Birds Bags um, bag. 
This one had been in the shop for a while. Okay, do you see how cute this pattern is? Do you see how absolutely adorable this fabric is? Oh my goodness. And I have wanted it for ever since she first made it. And then I forgot about it because like the holidays passed and I did not have money to buy things back then. So <laughs> that was back during um, bee poverty. <laughs> So I just like thought about it for a long time. Then I stopped, forgot it, it existed. And then the other day I was thinking about Christmas bags and I was like, you know what was really cute? That one. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna go and look and see what she has. And she still had this one. Why wouldn't anybody buy this? She has an Etsy shop. I'm going to link her below. That's Cheryl from Busy Bird Bags. Um. And I took the last one of this and I don't know if she has any more fabric, but she makes beautifully, um, very stiff interfaced bags. Um, Senbi has a maker maker bag from her. Um, and also Cheryl has been very generous in the past and donated for a giveaway. So, um, she is lovely. And like I said, I've been wanting to get one of her bags for a very long time. So, um, I love it and I will probably be getting more but like she even has this cute little like snowman cute snowman lining and everything and I love it so much it's bunnies catching snowflakes and little fat squirrels like it's just I love it okay so this is one of my acquisitions and I don't feel bad about it because I'm supporting another small business. And then, okay, so this is another thing I had to talk about. We ordered something else, some more holiday-ish bags. So we went on Leading Men Fiber Arts, which are the boys that we love and miss very, very terribly. And Steve better be watching this podcast. And if he doesn't, then I'm not watching his anymore. But <laughs> just kidding. We have a very sassy, loving relationship, Steve and I, but um, they carry these peat moss novelty little um, ball bags <laughs> and they are very handy and we had ordered some before and we use them all the time. So when they came out with these holiday prints, we were like, okay, well, we need them. So everybody got one um, except me because I got um, <laughs> but Baby B got these cute sheep and sweaters. Look, look at their goofy faces. Okay, it's just too funny. And also there are some alpacas on here too. Just too funny. Um, Sen B got this very, very, very cute, um, like buffalo plaid woodland themed one. This is so Sen B too. And then Queen Bee got the Ski Lodge. And fun fact, Queen Bee and I used to go um, downhill skiing almost every single weekend for like two or three years in a row because my elementary school had like a very like discounted, like you bought a membership and like season ski pass and um, ski rental through the school and we decided to do it. And so we used to do that all the time. So I thought that this one was super cute and she said it was her favorite one. And I'm like, oh, that reminds me of our, of our time skiing together. But, um, so yes, yeah, so this is Leading Men Fiber Arts and I'll show you the tag. And these are only $10, look, $10, yarn pouch. Okay, but I, I guess that's better than calling them ball bags. Yeah, yarn pouch, better. <laughs> but um, we actually got four of them, but one of them is a gift, so I can't show that yet. So those are our acquisitions, but I'm gonna go back to whips because I have a whip. I showed you guys the last, I showed you guys in the last episode that I am making a Hogwarts house scarf for the boyfriend. Um. And I had to rip it because I wasn't, it wasn't showing off the pattern very well. I wasn't very happy with it. 
So what I am doing now is I am taking some DK. So I was doing it out of DK before. Um, and I was holding a strand of sock yarn with it to make it a little thicker because the original pattern, the Hogwarts house scarf is one of my patterns. So instead of being a classic striped pattern, um, it's originally a marled, you marl um, a variegated skein on itself. And we have our own line of variegated Hogwarts house colors. Um, so it kind of makes it look more tweedy and classic. Um, and then you do this cool, cute little classic-y cables pattern on it. Well, I had this extra blue and I thought that it was perfect for him. Um, he was in the navy, so I was like, navy blue. I'm dumb, okay. <laughs> but it's DK, so I was like, it's not quite thick enough. Like, it's gotta be a little... Also, Peach is literally snoring in the... I'm gonna put this clip in later. Peach is literally snoring in the background, okay? She's literally laying here. Oh, big yawn. Big yawn! Just laying here snoring her head off. Okay, I'm done. Um, you will appreciate that clip. If you like dogs, you will. Anyways, back to the whip. So I decided because I have four skeins of this, I'll just hold it double and make it super chunky. So I'm really loving how it is knitting up. Um, I am worried I won't finish it in time for Christmas and have time to knit everybody else's gifts, but I'm going to start working my butt off on it. And then I realized that I misread my own pattern because I haven't knit this in two, three, three years or something crazy. Um, so there is a cable twist here. And you're supposed to twist it every fourth row, obviously. Like, why wouldn't you do that? And I'm like, why am I twisting every other row? It's very, very tight. I'm like, why would I ever write this? Okay, well, I didn't. I didn't, okay? <laughs> uh, but I am doing it now. And I'm not ripping it back because I already had to start this project over again. So it's just... And I think it's actually really cool. It kind of looks more like like ropey in a way. So I'm hoping he likes it. Uh, he lives in the South, so he doesn't really have need for a scarf right now, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, he should feel special because I've never knit anyone that isn't family something this complicated and involved and long. So we'll see. Um, but I actually started that last night because I had to rip out the other one and start it over and I dropped my cable needle and I can't lose that. So get in there, get in there. Why am I struggling? Why am I doing this to myself? Okay, there we go. Okay, so that's it for whips. Now some FOs because we have exactly four FOs to show you. One I have shown you before, three are new, one is severely messed up, okay? So we're not gonna judge the messed up one. I'm just letting you know right now, as a group, you are not allowed to judge the messed up one because I knit it, <laughs> okay? All right, it's gonna be, hopefully you guys will laugh, but not judge me. So, we have the Bavarian Forest Hat, which is the super cute gnome-like hat that um, Senbi has designed. And is it not so cute? It is, it's not super, like, it doesn't have to be gnomey. I mean, if you put a giant pom-pom on it, it looks like a cute little Santa elf hat. It has these beautiful cables all over it. It is super cozy. It is knit. I will tell you now, it is knit out of our bumble worsted and you only need one skein. 
um, Bumble Worsted is non-superwash Tarhi. It's our only non-superwash yarn, but it is just gorgeous. So this one here is Red Barn. Queen Bee knit this one. We all test knit the pattern. Um, the original is Pewter. Send Bee knit this one. I have Spruce and Baby Bee knit this one. And look, this one matches my sweater. Look, it matches my sweater. And I look like a cute little gnome. Okay, so the other day they were packing orders, um, Queen Bee and Send Bee. And I went out into the studio um, to help them with something. They had a question about something. And they were both wearing their hats. And I felt like I walked right into Santa's workshop and it was the most cheerful and adorable thing. And it just made me so happy. Um, all right. And then, <sighs> this one is a nightshade and I knit this one. And <laughs> As you can see, it's a little bit longer than literally any of the others. The others all look like exact carbon copies of each other. I don't know, actually I do know, I knit this too loose. So this is why gauge is important guys, because like if you don't check your gauge, you end up with a gnome hat that makes you look like the head elf. So, <laughs> oh, the best part is, is that it does match my sweater. So like, if you see me, a gnome or a troll walking around in your forest, in the backyard or like, you know, the local forest preserve. Um, like, you know, I just stepped out of a Jan Brett book. That's okay. <laughs> oh, actually, I really like it. I really like it, I'm not gonna lie. I think it's super cute. Um, if I sit here, you can't see the point necessarily, but I think I'm gonna leave it on for the rest of the video. <laughs> oh, okay, so, if you want to have a big gnome hat, like a big Bavarian forest hat, like the extra tall head elf, like that was Senbi's thing, because you know how the head elf in Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, like they all have their little elf hats and the head elf has sometimes the taller hat. And so they said, I'm the head, I'm just the head elf, which is fine, that's <laughs> fitting. And then Sen said, because I am the shortest one, I'm only five feet tall and they are, I think the second shortest one is 5'2". So like I'm a little bit, I'm a bit shorter than everybody else. Um, they said that I had to make mine extra tall to make up for those extra inches I've, I've, <laughs> I've lost. It is very cozy and cute though and I um actually mentioned in the last podcast that on mine what I was going to do was I was going to tack down my brim a little bit and I did do that. I did it like here and you can't even see where it is. Um, just in two spots and here this one it puckered a little bit because I pulled it too tight but that way because I am always um having a problem with my brims and I have to just make sure this is sitting right. I always have a problem with my brims like slowly getting less folded. Um, so yeah. Anyways, back to the hat. So the hat, <laughs> look, it's cute. So many Bavarian forest hats. Um, these will be, this pattern will be released on Friday. There will be a 25% off discount code for you guys. I am putting the discount code in the description below. So if you want to know and like get it at the 25% off price, look below. There will also be a 35% off code for our Sheep Bee, that is our $10 tier patrons on 
Patreon. Um, they will get that 35% off code. So if you are a Sheep Bee patron, um, then keep an eye out for that. But this is actually a really quick knit. Um, as far as cables go, I don't have a very hard time with cables just because I find them very intuitive. It's just kind of like braiding. So if you have a problem with cables, literally think about it like braiding hair. It's not like, um, like it's, it doesn't have to be that hard. Just make sure you're cabling on the right row and make sure that you're following gauge and you're not like, um, knitting one to 1.5 needle sizes bigger than you should. So the body is knit on a US nine and mine is kind of more like maybe it was knit on a 10. I don't know. I don't know how it ended up last night when I finished it. I was like, why is this looking so big? And it's not even just the decrease that I did bigger. It's the whole, it's the whole hat. So we are going to put the gauge measurement for the brim. So like the two by two, because it's hard. You can't really count um, gauge in like cables. So we're going to put the gauge for the brim. So if you are knitting at gauge in the brim, you should be okay. But if you are known to be a looser knitter, maybe go down a needle size. Maybe go down a needle size or double check your like length when you're knitting. I don't know. I don't know how I messed, I don't know how I messed it up guys. Like what the heck? It's just, you know, is what it is so that's very exciting so Sembi is coming out with a pattern our friend sock witchery is coming out with a pattern and we have that sale happening so i said i was going to bring it up again again the sale is starting thursday um that discount code for the shop will also be in the description below um the info on when it starts will be in the newsletter it'll be on instagram and ravelry patrons all level patrons will be able to shop an hour early so since it's going to be everything that is ready to ship in the shop and we're not doing any restocks um a lot of the colors i should also say a lot of the colors in the shop we are not doing a restock of anytime soon those were our um wisconsin sheep and wool slash um rhinebeck virtual colors they're not going to be restocked. So whatever's in the shop is what's in the shop and we're not going to be doing any more of those. Um, those colors might come back. They're just probably not gonna come back anytime soon just because we are working on some new colors and we have some new updates that we wanna do and we're super excited. Like, let me just say, we did a Jane Austen themed advent calendar and we came up with, well, we, Queen Bee and Sam Bee came up with 25, actually it might have all been Queen Bee who did that one, 25 Jane Austen colors. And we are going to do an update that's died to order for those colors probably in January or February. I hope you can hear me whispering. But psyched, just psyched, so psyched for that. Um. <laughs> But anyway, so fun things are happening. If you aren't on the newsletter, you should get on the newsletter because we do special giveaways for the newsletter only. Last um, Friday, we did an advent calendar giveaway on the newsletter. So definitely get on the newsletter. Um, I try not to send out more than one newsletter a week. Usually I only send out one every other week. So I try not to spam you, but it's the best way to get the most up-to-date information. More, it's, it's more informative and more benefits than just Instagram and Facebook. A little less benefits than being a patron on Patreon. So, yeah, there you go. Um, but another thing is, is that newsletter um, subscribers 
get the same discount code that you guys here on Caught in the Wool podcast get. So if you watch the podcast, I give you guys a better discount code on new pattern releases. You guys get that 25% off um, and same with newsletter. But people who are just on, follow us on Instagram and Facebook, they get 15% off. So yeah, there you go. Um, but yeah, okay. What am I trying to say? If you are a patron, you will be able to shop early. So what you can do, what you can do is you can add the items to your cart now that you want to buy at 20% off. And hopefully when it comes time for the sale to go live, you just check out and you're good to go. Um, also, there will be a bit of a turnaround on those tonal yarns I mentioned. Um, if you want your ready to ship all the other colors except tonals, if you want those items ASAP, put them in a separate order. So I would check out with those first and then go back and order your tonals because the tonals will not sell out. Um, they're dyed to order so we have them, you know, they're unlimited basically. So you don't have to worry about that. But those will be probably a six week turnaround just because the holidays are coming up. It depends how many orders we're going to get. Ideally, we will get those out before Christmas, but if there are a lot of them, we probably won't do them until after New Year's and have them ship out at that point. Um, just so we can enjoy the holidays, like I said. I don't want Queen Bee and Sen Bee to be too stressed out because they've been dying like crazy people since literally May. Basically, it's been nonstop dying and work for them and we just want to be able to enjoy the holidays. But I mean, you're still going to be able to get those yarns at 20% off. It'll just be a little bit of a longer die to order time. Um, and then hopefully after the holidays, we'll get back to a two week die to order turnaround. But there you go. Um, so quick recap. Hat patterns coming out. Big sale. And now now Christmas yarn so the Christmas yarn is happening Christmas yarn update is happening on Wednesday December 2nd so after Thanksgiving weekend I have my bucket of oh hold on I have my bucket of Christmassy yarns here I don't have all the colors with me um some of the colors we are waiting to dry because they've been dyed they're just drying right now um so we have some new colors also i think the only one i don't have here to show you is actually so that one is hagrid's fruitcake and hagrid's fruitcake we've had for the past couple of years so it's not like a brand new color that nobody's ever seen before um but if you haven't seen it before, you might want to check it out on the website and the newsletter because there should be, well, actually, no, I won't have a picture of it in the newsletter in this update. I will have it in pictures in the newsletter that will be going out probably Tuesday or Wednesday. Probably Wednesday. Sorry, I'm like thinking about how I'm organizing this because it's a holiday weekend. So like it's all kind of like crazy right now. So I'm going to be sending out another newsletter on Wednesday just to remind people that this holiday update is happening because we've had people bugging us about doing a second holiday update. So this year, originally, we were just going to do five holiday colors. We ended up releasing a few other colorways um, just because those were ones we found that we had in stock left over from last year. So we decided to list those because why have them hang around? Um, they all sold out. So now these are all going to be freshly dyed. Um, the colorways we had in the last update were ooh, Holly Jolly Christmas, which is sold out right now. Um, I have one here. This is the only one that didn't like actually leave in shipment yet because it's waiting on a dad to order I believe um 
but it's super cute. This one will be in the update. We are restocking this one. We will not be restocking Where Are You Christmas. So that super cute yarn that I showed in the very first socks. These ones. These ones. This one will not be restocked because it is still... What are you doing? She's tired of me talking. She's like my dog. She's like done with it. Um, <laughs> this one is still in the shop. So we have some left on bubble sock. This one here, which is that it's super soft. It would make like a beautiful magic cake cowl. Um, and this is the Grinch inspired from the Jim Carrey, the Grinch, because it's just, it's so cute and it kind of has its own unique like color palette. Um, I absolutely love it. Queen Bee is actually knitting those socks for, I believe, Baby Bee for Christmas. So it's just like a very cute, like slightly different take on Christmas colors because this is a very like bright pink, this like Grinchy green, and then like just a really nice Christmassy blue. Like is Christmassy blue a thing? It is because you see, you know what I mean when I say Christmassy blue, but it's got like these cute little speckles and depth. And you can see like now that it's focused, why we call it bubble sock, they look like little tiny bubbles. Um, but yeah, so what's in the shop of this right now will be in that 20% off sale and it is, um, what's left is left. So if you want it, I wouldn't wait until the sale. I'm just giving you the heads up just because it might sell out. But if you like, aren't like, um, I'll, I'll wait and see then you can wait and see. Um, the other colors we will be restocking. So these were also in the op update. Restocking, like Christmas stockings. Okay, I'll stop. Um, we have Red Barn in Winter. We have, um, oh my gosh, good thing it's tagged because I am blinking. I've been podcasting too long, so now my brain is leaving me. Um, winter berries, and I talked about these more in detail in the last podcast, so I'm not going to talk about them too much now. If you want a refresher, go to the end. You can skip until you see me holding yarn. I talk about these a lot in the last podcast. And we also have snowy pine. So these all fade together very, very, very nicely. We will also be bringing back um, Old Barn in Winter. So Old Barn in Winter is exactly like this color, except it is our um, barn wood tonal type color instead of the red so it has a bit of this brown and it has like a very cool like just like a barn wood gray with like hints of taupe like a warmer gray and browns in it it just looks like an old worn out barn basically worn out faded barn <laughs> um but yes so that one will be in the update as well so those are the ones that we are restocking. We also had thrown in our Highland, and I skeined this super tight. I don't know why I did that. Um, our Highland Yuletide. So I had two skeins of this in the last update that we put in there. We were like, oh, we have a couple left. Um, we decided to dye more and add this in and this is this is one of my favorite holiday colors because it has this beautiful whiskey gold in it and we actually have this as a tonal um as our whiskey color in the online shop and it has this beautiful modeled um come on focus and i hope the lighting is picking this up okay this modeled whiskey gold greens browns very earthy with like this pop of red in it and it's almost like 
In some spots it's almost like a more pinky red. So it's kind of got like a little bit of a feminine twist to it. But yeah, I absolutely love this one. This makes beautiful socks and we have had it and in sock sets in the past. I don't think, actually I know for a fact we've never had it on other bases other than our squishy sock and coquette sock in the past. So we will have it on a few different bases, which is very exciting. Um, This is, oh, I should tell you guys also real quick. We will be restocking our, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm struggling over here. We'll be restocking our um, Happy Christmas Heel and Toe sets. So these sold out super fast. I think they were the first thing to sell out in the last update. So we have them on our Coquette sock base here. They are each 20 gram minis. We will also have them restocked on our squishy sock base. And if you want to do DK cozy hiker socks, which are the socks I showed you before, or you want to do DK sock a day socks. Now our sock a day sock pattern is actually a three pattern in one pattern. So if you're new to socks, I highly recommend trying it. Um, and it's very similar to cozy hiker. Um, it's got a few differences in it. Cozy Hiker is, has a different heel design and um, a few different things in it. But what you can do, since we don't have DK heel and toe bundles, um, just double it. Like if you want to use our squishy DK, literally just take the squishy sock and double it because squishy sock and squishy DK are the exact same blend. Um, they're the 7525 merino nylon and also doubling your yarn will make it a little bit sturdier and last a little bit better than just using one single strand anyway, which is very exciting. But these are super cute. They um go with all of the Christmas colors like incredibly well. And I feel like I'm gonna try to fix the coloring of this video in the editor. I don't know if it's turning out too yellow or and or maybe washed out. But look at how cute this is. Um, we, what am I trying to say? We also have other heel and toe bundles still in the shop. So I mentioned before that we have those mini skein sets for um, the pure happiness, which is a rainbow of bright colors. And we also have the, oh, excuse me, um, the autumnal happiness, which is a rainbow of earthy jewel tones. We have those as mini skeins in the shop as well. So, if you wanted an even bigger variety of color to make heels and toes, that is an option as well. We also have some other heel and toe bundles. We have some Halloween ones. And because I was showing you guys this tag earlier, my bundle got a little messed up, but we have this autumnal colored one, which actually complements Highland Yuletide really, really well. Now you don't have to use all these colors, but the black walnut and the copper just go so well with this one. And then you can always use the terracotta in another project later. Like, you know, you don't have to use all of them. Um, I have another color that wasn't in the last holiday update, but it is a colorway we've had in the past. We are bringing it back. And all of these colors that I'm showing you are all going to be ready to ship. So once they sell out, they're out. I, I highly doubt. I'm not going to say we absolutely won't, but I highly doubt we will not be doing any other Christmas updates because Christmas is going to be over by the time we die and can ship anything. So this is probably the last chance to get Christmas colors from us for the rest of 2020. But we have here Gingerbread House. 
And let me tell you right now, those Pure Happiness mini skein sets that I mentioned before with Gingerbread House would be so cute because as you can see, there are a bunch of rainbowy bright colors in here. And if you did like super bright alternating heels and toes, it would be so cute. So this will be in the shop. And then I have three brand new colorways. One you may have seen before. We have Cottage Christmas. So a Cottage Christmas is dyed similarly to our Victorian Christmas. Um, it has this soft soft earthy green this bright red also a deeper red um a little bit of gold and it almost looks like a little bit of gray too yeah a little bit of silver in here it's a very homey toned down christmas color um but what it is inspired after is just your classic cottagey, yeah, like just a homey, cottagey, cozy Christmas. Um, one of our favorite Christmas movies is The Holiday. Is it The Holiday? Yeah, I think it's... Yes, The Holiday. Okay, so The Holiday has Cameron Diaz in it, Kate Winslet, Jack Black, and Jude Law. I know this because we have watched it a hundred times or something. <laughs> and there's a super cute cottage that like Kate Winslet and Cameron Diaz trade houses, right? That's the whole thing. Um, and Kate Winslet's little cottage in England is so cute and sweet. And that's kind of like the vibe we were going for with this. Um, we came up with this colorway for a collaboration we did with Beautiful Sister who makes project bags. We love those girls. Um, we see them at a bunch of shows and we, um, we love their bags. I know I'm like always using their Chicago bag because they're based in Chicago. So they have a bag that has the Chicago like flag theme to it. Um, I absolutely love that bag. Um, but we did a collaboration with them last year and we came up with this colorway for that collab. Um, so it's never been released on full skeins before. This is the first time and this will be in the shop. And again, like this heel and toe would just set it off so well, as well as the Christmas one that I dropped on the floor, of course. But look, is that not so sweet? I love it. Okay, so now I have two new, never before seen colors. We have our third annual Dobby's Christmas stocking. So we have done this one in the past and I believe I have reskained it every time in the past. So the colors would be like these two yarns are reskained just because we find that it's more fun to show some colors in a like reskained way. Um, so these two are reskained. Usually I reskain the Dobby's Christmas stocking, or at least I have in the past two years. But this year, because I am tired of standing at the winder, I decided not to. And it is just the cutest, happiest, plum puddingest, cute colorway. I am like absolutely in love with it. Like look at this beautiful, bright, cheerful green, very emeraldy green, bright cherry red, this cute like happy gold. Like it's just, it's just like a color that you think, like if you like Harry Potter, you'll know Dobby would see this and he would just be like, yes, I need socks out of this. I need like every, I will knit socks out of this because Dobby knits socks. Like he actually knits them. Do you remember? Like, okay, so I was rereading the books 
and he gifts Harry hand knit socks that he knit for him. It's too cute. So that's what we have here. We have Dobby's Christmas stocking 2020 and it's super cute. And I get one of these. I get one every year. And my first year I made a Mrs. Weasley quick knit cap, which is a free pattern that we have. And I didn't do anything yet with last year's, but I think, I think I might make a Mrs. Weasley quick knit cap hat every year. I think I might just do that so I have a collection of them. But yes, so this is our third our third one in the collection. Um, and last but not least, we have Hard Candy Christmas. So, Sen Bee came up with this one. This is a Queen Bee colorway, by the way. Um, Sen Bee designed this one. And this is just a very beautiful, distressed type colorway. It would make really cute socks. I know I keep saying socks, but like it's winter, it's rainy, I have socks on my mind. It would make a cute anything. But a lot of thought went into this colorway. So Hard Candy Christmas, it's named after the Dolly Parton song. Um, but it has a little bit of blue speckling up here on the gray. When you knit it, in socks it'll pull up like this guy did here but the grays will meet up so you will have the grays with a little bit of blue speckle in one section and then you'll get the red and the green and the whiskey brown in the other section which will be absolutely beautiful so it definitely has a more earthy vibe to it um, than some of our brighter Christmas colors. And this one would actually pair well with a lot of the, I know like this is kind of weird, a lot of the Outlander colors. This one, like, like they pair well together. Like if you wanted to do a Christmas fade project, you could totally do it. Um, I was looking at this one compared to, kind of because it has that whiskey color in it, um, like the Through the Stones color is gray with little bits of blue speckles on it, and also um, Blared, and that has like that whiskey color, um, Highlander and Bonnie Lass both have that whiskey speckled on it. Like we just have a lot of whiskey. You know, we don't really drink. Like not because we have like anything against drinking. We just, um, we just don't feel well when we drink. Like we just get, we're, we're just too tired when we drink. Like it's not like a fun time for us. We just like go to bed. So it's almost like why do it? Um, but yeah, we have a lot of like whiskey themed yarn considering how like we don't really drink. <laughs> um, this one is just like, another thing is, is it's kind of got like a little bit of a moodiness to it. So they were like, they wanted to come up with a colorway for Dolly Parton because if you know, like Dolly Parton like donated like a million dollars or more or something to COVID, um, vaccine research, like, which is wonderful. She's just like a darling, um, big fans. And also like, it is a weird Christmas. Like it is a weird year for people. And you know, you might want like a bit of a moodier colorway. So that's what this guy is. And also I am, well, Queen Bee is making socks that have, I've shown them before, they're the Patton's Croy socks and they're called Blue Rag or Rag with Blue or something. And they have gray stripes and then blue and red and orange and stripes in between. And this kind of re reminds me of that vibe, almost like, you know, just kind of like a 
distressed down south kind of cowboy Christmas. Like, just real cute and homey and classic. I actually, like, I told them, like, you, ma you made one for me, right? <laughs> because I'm just in love with it. Um, I don't know if it's, like, the rainy weather or what, but this is just, like, hitting me different right now. So, that's what we got. Um, again, those will be up on Wednesday, December 2nd. It will be at 7 p.m., Patrons, like always, shop an hour early, so patrons will be able to shop at 6 p.m. Um, again, that is central time zone, so that will be Chicago time. That's our time zone, so some people don't remember time zones. Sometimes I don't remember time zones, but just remember the time zone. So if you are Eastern, that would be 7 p.m. shop early for patrons, 8 p.m. the update, and then, you know, hour after for Mountain Time and whatever, whatever California is. I don't know what they, they call their time zone. <laughs> I don't know. I've never lived in California. So, um, yeah. So again, so that's central time zone. It will be at 6 p.m. Um, the shop update, you know, I'm probably going to put the update at 6 p.m. for, um, like, I don't want to do it too early on Thanksgiving, but in the past, I've just done the sale on Thanksgiving. Like, that's what I'm talking about right now, if that wasn't clear. I'm talking about the 20% off. Thank you, Thanksgiving sale. In the past, we have started it on Thanksgiving. I don't want to do it too late in case people are doing stuff later, but I don't want to interrupt their holiday either. But we've always started it on Thanksgiving. So I think I'm still going to start it at Thanksgiving. And I'm just going to put it at the classic time we always do. Which is 6 p.m. for patrons. And 7 p.m. for the general public. So yeah. So just a quick recap. I know I keep doing recaps. But there's been so much in this episode. New patterns coming out. These super cute hats that I put underneath all the yarn now. I don't want to crush my glasses. The cute Bavarian forest hat. Um, the stack of book socks that Lindsay is coming out with too. I just want to put that in there. But there will be the um, the code on these as well. The 25% off in the description below. Um, we will also have the Thanksgiving sale. And then a Christmas yarn update on Wednesday. And thank you guys for hanging out with me, even though this has been an incredibly long podcast. Um, it has been really nice chatting with you guys. It took a while in the beginning. I had to really, like, drink some coffee and chill and what have you. But it's been very pleasant. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and getting caught in the wool. I hope you guys had fun. I hope you guys have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Thank you again on behalf of all the bees and myself for watching our podcast, for following us on Instagram or Facebook or subscribing to our newsletter or buying our patterns and yarn. You guys, you guys make the dream work. Seriously. Thank you so much and happy holidays. Bye.